Hey, learn audio engineering. In this series, you'll learn how to build and solder your own XLR microphone cable. In our first video, you'll learn step one, prepping the cable and stripping the wire. I'm Gary Cable. I run Oratone Productions, a full service production and mastering studio in Kelowna, BC, Canada. I do a lot of recording, arranging, composing, and I have a couple of touring groups, Legendary Rock Live and Orchestral Rock Odyssey with the Gary Cable Project. Now, we're gonna talk about building a cable and there's really four steps. The first step is stripping and prepping your wire. The second step is tinning the wire ends and the cable terminations. The third step is actually soldering the parts together. And the fourth step is terminating the ends and testing. I've been building my own cables for more than four decades now, and my first word of advice would be buy yourself a quality soldering iron. I've owned three good Weller soldering irons over the course of my life. Each one of them's lasted more than 20 years, and they pay for themselves in the first couple of months of use. The second recommendation I would make to you is buy quality components to make your cables with. I'm still using cables that I've made 40 years ago and they work every bit as good as the day I made them. So if you use good equipment and good parts, you're gonna make cables that you can use for a lifetime. I have specific choices that I use for live cables and different choices that I use for studio recording cables. And we'll talk about the differences between them and why those differences are and, and the benefits that you get from using different cables. I exclusively use uh, Neutrik connectors for 90% of my cables and all of my XLR cables. They will last for a lifetime. I use two types of Neutrik connectors and the model numbers that I use are NC3FXXB and the same model number with BAG. The only difference between those two connectors is the B connectors have gold-plated contact points and the BAG connectors have silver-plated contact points. Gold is a more noble metal and lasts more for plugging and unplugging, so it's great for live use when your cables get a lot of plugging and unplugging. Silver actually is a better sounding conductor than gold, so I use that on all of my studio cables. Other than that, they are identical. Now, if we look at the connectors, they usually come in a bag. Let's just open one of these connectors. And there's four parts, and I want you to see the four parts because you have to do something before you build a cable. This is the terminator nut where you twist it in to make the connector. And the terminator nut needs to go on the cable before you do your soldering or you have to take it apart and start again. So first rule, use the tightening nut and find the cable that it's going to go on and put it on. I generally do this even before I have done any of the stripping or tinning or anything, so you're gonna have a cable that looks something like that. Now the other thing that's interesting about those terminating nuts is they come in every color of the rainbow. So if you're making snakes and you wanna have the ends color-coded, you can get these in just about any color. I'm gonna put the red nut on this piece of cable. So I'm ready to terminate this end and then solder the end on. For my live cables, I use cable made by a Japanese company called Canare. And the reason that I use the Canare cable is it's a rubber jacket, so it stays soft and flexible in any temperature. And it's got a very, very tightly braided shield. It's kind of a pain when you're actually making the connection because you have to unbraid that shield before you can solder it but it makes the cables incredibly strong, incredibly bendable, and the chance of the shield breaking over time, they do them testing them with tens of thousands of bends and the shields don't break. So for live use, all I use is Canare cable, and this particular model is called L2T2S. For all of my studio cables, I use another Japanese cable company called Mogami. And Mogami, uh, this is the cable that they would call Mogami Gold. The one we're gonna be using today is Mogami 2549. All that it is is a two conductor plus shield XLR microphone cable. It does not have a braided shield, so it, you don't wanna be bending it lots of times and manhandling it like you might use with a live cable, but it does sound wonderful. So I use that on all of my studio cables. Now, once we have our cables prepared with the ends having the nuts on them, so we know we're not going to have to unsolder anything after the fact, 
Our next step is going to be stripping the wire so that it's ready for tinning. Now we'll start with the Mogami and I generally like to strip with a small razor knife. You have to be very careful because of course if you go too deeply you can cut through some of the shielding wires and the less shield you have the worse contact you get and more chance for noise, more chance for failure. So I usually just gently rotate the cable in my left hand while I saw with a razor knife around the cable until I have made a circuit. And when you're doing this you can generally tell when you're still sawing rubber before you actually touch metal. When you feel anything that likes touching metal then you usually just bend your cable and see how close you are to being through the cable. And then just repeat that process. It may take you 30 seconds or a minute, but ultimately you will get to the point where you're touching metal and you can see the metals exposed and then just work your way around the cable until you have an opening that you can pull the end of the cable off. Now this is something that I recommend patience at this step because I know a lot of people like to rush this or they use a set of cutting pliers to try and trim the end off and usually what happens when you do that is you'll cut through some of the shield. This is the most important part of the XLR cable so we don't want to do that so I generally just bend until I can see copper and then it's really easy to see where you haven't gone through the last of the rubber and then when you've gone all the way around and you can find that just use your fingernail and pull the rubber off. So in the case of Mogami you will see some twist wrapped bare copper wire under the jacket and inside that you will find two conductors, a blue one and a white one, as well as just a piece of white nylon or clear nylon that's used to help make the cable stay round when they're actually building the cable inside the rubber jacket. So once you have your shielding wires pulled off to the side and you can see what's left inside, it's actually good practice to take a look at the rubber sleeve that you've pulled off to expose that and make sure that you haven't left a significant amount of copper inside there because if you have you might want to just trim it and try again. So now we're left with basically three conductors, a shield, a blue, a white, and a couple of pieces of nylon that just help it make it round. So pull that hard to one side, pull all the copper to one side and twist it to turn that into a single conductor that you can terminate on an XLR cable. The next thing you're going to want to do is get rid of these pieces of plastic filler. So just carefully pull them off to the side and either using side cutters or end cutters, just clip them off. So then using any good quality pair of wire strippers, you're going to want to bear yourself a little less than a quarter inch on the end of these conductors and make sure that you use the right size opening so that you're not trimming conductor when you cut off the shield. And so then you're going to have a twisted piece of copper and then two conductors with bared ends. We're going to terminate the other end of the same cable. We've determined that male and female are a pair so we've opened the correct one. The boots are exactly the same for male and female so it doesn't matter if you get those reversed but we're going to put the boot on and then we're going to open up the end of the cable. Now let's turn to this piece of Canare L2T2S because it's a little different in terms of how we're going to be approaching getting it terminated. I'm going to start with about the same distance, something that resembles three quarters, maybe seven eighths of an inch. And again, I mentioned that the difference between this particular Canare wire and the Mogami that I use in the studio is that this wire has a braided shield. Quick check to make sure that there's nothing in the piece of rubber that I've pulled off and we can see that this shield is quite tightly braided. So like the Mogami cable we need to turn this braided shield into a single point of contact for the connector and the only way we can do that is by unbraiding the cable. This is a little bit of work but you need to find a very small sharp tool. I actually have some old dental tools that my dentist wasn't using anymore and borrowed them from him probably 20 years ago but any kind of a sharp tool or pick and you just have to go all the way around the cable just picking from the exposed end first trying to pull those little braids out and this is a little bit of a tedious step but you don't want to rush it because you don't want to have the wires break because they're 
pulling against each other when they unbraid. The other thing that you'll notice is that inside the canare cable, they don't have those two little pieces of nylon to help make it round. They actually have some fiber that's kind of like a cotton fiber you'd see in a cotton rope. And so as you're picking this, you might see fuzz and fluff coming out the end because you are also tearing the uh, interior cotton rope as you unbraid the fiber. My experience has been that these braided shields really add to the life of a cable if you're using it on the road. Now, in this particular case, we're going to use the dental instrument and just bend all of the pieces of the tinned braiding wire out to the side. You want to be very careful that you pull all of those wires down. And then you can go in and there's, a, first of all, there's a little sheath of paper. Generally, I'll pull that out so it gets out of the way and it's easier to see what's in there. And then I will go in and, like I did with the other shield wire, try and get it so that it is all pulled tightly to one side. So you'll hold the conductors and the cable going that way, pull all the shield wire to one side, and just like we did the last time, twist it. Now in this particular case, you'll notice that the amount that we're twisting is significantly longer than the other conductors because of course we had braided wire and the extra cable is going to give us some extra length. So it's not a problem to just take that and trim off whatever amount is longer than the other cable so that you have three conductors about the same length. And then we'll also be pulling all of this rope out to one or two locations where it's easy enough for us to just trim it off and get it out of our way because we're done with it. And just like in the case of the Mogami wire, we're just going to take something less than a quarter of an inch and expose that on the other two conductors and then give them a little twist. So that's basically the end of step one. We now have our wires essentially ready for termination. Thanks for watching. Join me in our next video where we cover step two, tinning the bare ends of the wire and getting the cable ends ready for soldering. If this video helped you out, please give it a like with a thumbs up and subscribe to learn audio engineering. If you'd like to get any further information about Oratone Productions, please check out oratone.biz. If you'd like more information on Legendary Rock Live or Orchestral Rock Odyssey, please check out garycableproject.com.